Happy 2019 Warriors. How's everyone doing? Good morning. So it's 2019. Let's make some green this year. Everyone ready? Everyone ready to be patient? Hello, nice to meet you, Sri. So the year starts off with a little head fake in the Dixie. Uh, tried to take out, did take out 96, couldn't close back underneath it. So it looks to me like we're going to most likely challenge the upside again, maybe one more time, probably due to the fact that when I look at S&Ps, although we had a nice little bounce here, uh, if you see this RSI reading here on the daily, that was a confirmed low. So uh, to me, it looks like we should take out these lows. Uh, and we'll see if we could get some divergences developing here. Don't know if it's going to be from 520, but that was a pretty good level. Obviously, the bulls would like to see S&Ps back above the 2600. That was a breakdown. Uh, but the yen is still signaling potential risk off. I still see no reason to uh, be getting long the yen. It's very oversold, but uh, the RSI structure uh, even though we're getting a little divergence, says that we could rally, but we're heading towards those objectives. A lot of us uh, talked about here on Forex Analytics, taking a look at the weekly. We're under all the moving averages. Uh, 108 to 107 was talked about, so perhaps the yen completes this with the S&Ps making another new low, and then uh, we start to get risk on sometime in January, but uh, I don't think that we're just going to start off. Uh, in fact, you know, the big January effect is normally a positive in the markets, but also we have to keep in mind uh, as January goes, especially the first week is kind of a tell for the rest of the year. And I'd have to say this is not a great start for the first trading year, the uh, first trading day of the year. So I want to see what happens in NASDAQ down around 5,900, 5,800 in here. This was a long-term target that I talked about here. Of course, uh, I did not ride it down all the way. Just got the first wave here and then missed the uh, collapse that we had into Thanksgiving and into the end of the year. And uh, with the dollar looking like it's going to make a move for one more high, uh, we have gotten to targets that... Uh, you know, Greg and some of the people I interviewed were talking about when it looked like uh, it was, you know, kind of a uh, stretch, but we got up to 1288 here in the gold. I'd, I'd have a hard time wanting to be long gold here. In fact, I'm considering shorts in both gold and silver for at least a pullback, and maybe it'll be pretty sharp depending upon what the dollar does. You could see here that we're diverging on the four hour, and at the uh, one hour, we also diverge. Uh, similar situation, in fact, silver is even weaker today. Uh, the caveat in silver is that it was much stronger and the gold-silver ratio had uh, turned, but uh, looks to me like it could be vulnerable for some type of pullback here into 15. And I think we're gonna have uh, some people in here helping us. Uh, Steve has laryngitis or not the greatest voice. So um, after Blake is here, why don't you guys prepare your questions if I'm gonna cover for Steve in the last 30 minutes before our interview with Chase. And uh, <laughs> So any markets that you want some type of look forward to after Blake is through, I'd be happy to answer your questions. So uh, you think you're going to get rid of me that easily, uh, right? I just don't want you to uh, blow it out anymore. <laughs> you know, so I, I saw the Skype and, you know, we could do that for for the session or, or two that we have left uh, this week. So you have a chance to recover. Happy New Year, buddy. <laughs> Happy New Year to everybody. I, I, I can speak for a while, but, uh, you know, obviously keeping a low voice because I have laryngitis and pharyngitis. Yeah. So the little dude, the little dude managed to, you know, yeah. to get in fact, you. a nice <laughs> New Year's present. Yes. Uh, but yeah. to be honest, I, I wouldn't want to um, skip, you know, uh, speaking for just a few minutes because I, I think there are some nice uh, trading opportunities out there at the moment, and I can I can exclusively speak about those, so I can I can okay. do it for like 
five to ten minutes. Uh, okay. I, and yeah, just like don't, minute, don't push like it. Minute, more than you that. You just yeah. used up two minutes of your uh, voice <laughs> just now. No, so. no, I'll, ha I'll have a break until then because Blake uh, goes first. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, you know what's also interesting uh, from when Steve called the bottom in Bitcoin? Uh, look how it's respected some of these FIB levels here on this pullback. You know, we got this big candle off 61.8 and then it uh, pulled back and this time it's holding 50%. And I don't think we got to Steve's target off this wedge that we had here. Yeah, so, but I think there, is, there, there should be at least one more leg to the upside. And uh, if, if you look at the right. price action to, today, Ethereum is up almost 7%. Bitcoin yeah, is, not, is, is not following yet. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure my, my target once Ethereum broke broke out from 100, my target for Ethereum was 170, and we've already covered like two thirds of the way there. Yeah. I think that Bitcoin is also going to make it to at least to its, to its target first. Okay, buddy. So uh, happy New Year, Blake. I hope you had a nice holiday season and uh, happy uh, New Year, Blake. Happy New Year, buddy. Hey, happy New Year, guys. Let's kill it. Hey, 2019. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I just, make, I just want to make sure everything's coming through. Uh, coming through okay. Um, yeah, happy New Year's, guys. Um, and uh, man, no, as you pointed out, Dale, not a really good, uh, not a really good start to the year. That's for sure. Um, we are, you know, Steve is his voice is uh, is failing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to step in a little bit more. The normal today, but let me, um, you, you know, you know, coach, you were just talking about gold, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, so, so here's the question that I have, and let me let me go ahead and um, oh, where am I? Oh, there I am. Okay, so I'm switching things up a little bit today, so just bear with me. I got to find the right screen. Um, that would be this one. Okay, so uh, you you got you got. You know, uh, let's go over to the dollar index. So you got the dollar that's uh, that's firm, right? Yeah. And 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 you have gold too, right? So if you go over gold and you go, oh well, gold's at the six one eight retracement. I don't I don't know if you guys noticed that gold's you know right. probing that six one eight. The question is, it, 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 let's say you're right, and let's say you um, you fade gold here, okay? Um, uh, you you fade gold here. Does the dollar start to firm up after that? I mean, because the dollar's already firm today, so right. you know to, to, that's that's the question we. We, we we have the dollar that's been relatively strong, um, you know, through this, you know, you can see how it's it's been relatively strong through this whole move in gold. I mean, even though um, uh, even though we were down a little bit here over the last couple of days or maybe over the last week or so, um, gold is still, you know, gold is still powering higher. So gold is powering higher and the dollar just really held up. So if we see a little bit of, um, um, oh, wait, hold on. Really quick, HG just asked okay. me a question. Okay. Okay, Paul. Paulie's going to um, be here to help us too. Oh, Paulie's going to jump in. Oh, that's yeah. great. Okay, good. Um, now, um, and we'll we'll bring him we'll bring him on here and and maybe in like the next twenty minutes or so. So, so maybe uh, Blake uh, Gold has been more about safe haven buying because of what's happened in stocks uh, rather than uh, well, obviously not a. A weak dollar play. There had to have been another reason, and maybe it's just a fear trade right now. Yeah, I mean, well, that's it. I mean, the the, the markets are definitely under a lot of pressure here, and so hold on, really quick. Um, you know, the markets are really under pressure, and that's real. That's that's just put a lot of downside pressure on, on, uh, on, on, it, you know, downside pressure on a lot of different. Assets, uh, namely, you know, the, you you got the the euro dollar. It's been under pressure. You got the cable. It's been under pressure. Um, and 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 you you have other currencies like the look at the Aussie. I mean, the Aussie is yeah. actually breaking down. Now that has to do with the the Chinese PMI that was released overnight, and the Chinese PMI has uh, has uh, you know came in weak, and it's it's put a lot of downside pressure on the Aussie itself. And um, we're breaking below trend lows. I mean, this is. You know, scary price action, and it's gonna. It, it you, you know, I have to, I have to look back and and look at the S and P and realize, you know, we've we've gone really far in a long in, for a long time. I mean, when you, you you could you could sit here and go, well, yeah, but we've sold off pretty aggressively. You know, the the end of last year, 
but no, if you if you take the last you know several years, I mean, you go back from you know 2008 to 2010. I mean, we've rallied quite substantially. So, you know, to to see us under pressure right now is not surprising. The question is, are we going to be able to recover a little bit from here before we resume this downtrend? And and I'm. I mean, I'm in the camp that we're going to bounce at some point, you know, as you uh, as you pointed out, maybe at the beginning, you know, sometime, you know, here in the next week or two, we might bounce uh, going into like later January in risk. But you have to use that as an opportunity to sell into strength, I would think. Um, so that's going to be the that's going to be really the 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 question that I have moving forward is how how far is this bounce going to take us before it gives us you know fresh opportunities to sell. So you know what I thought we'd do, uh, uh, Dale, is is take a look at all the majors and kind of uh, see where our, our our key levels are for 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 these pairs. And Polly, right, you know, you. yeah, I mean, Polly, he covered you know he covered um, uh, uh, the analysis on the European uh, crossover, which was. Hours ago, if you're a Forex Analytics subscriber, you, you it's 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 exclusive to Forex Analytics subscribers. If you didn't listen to it, you know he'll cover probably some of those key levels that he discussed hours ago. So, um, but I guess first and foremost, you notice the euro big rejection at 115. Now we had talked about uh, the 115 level as being key resistance. Um, uh, uh, on the the week ahead video, and and we we really hit 115 or 114.96 pretty damn close. We hit 115 and we've reversed, you know, back below 114. Now, if you use forex analytics, and you know, you, just even this morning, the analysis was, uh, you know, big time rejection of the 115 level overnight with the pair probing the upper end of the range doubtful we can break higher ahead of nfp on friday and the 114 level may be tested in a north american trade and here we are you know we were we are at 114 uh 27 we have then since slipped to 114 so we are probing you know the, the lows now we've had about 100 pip trading range thus far today so um I don't know how much downside is left in the euro dollar. I, I would think that we're probably going to find some sort of support pretty soon. So if you take, you know, this trend line, you know, drag it across the bottoms here, uh, you know, maybe 113.80 might give us some support. If you take the the low to the high, you know, that that's a 50% retracement. You can see that. There's a 50% retracement there. So, you know, 113.80 is probably going to offer us some sort of support for the pair um, today. Now, d does, you know, does that necessarily mean that, um, you know, that you want to be long down there? I don't know. I mean, that, that might actually not even be a bad place to be long just if you're playing the ranges because, you know, bottom line is we are still in a range, right? So... Yeah. You know, we are at 127% extension of the, the this move higher right now. Um, the 161% extension comes in at 113.72. So, you know, somewhere down here, 113.80, 113.70, I think that would offer a good, you know, range trading type of uh, trade. So, in other words, if, if you're if you're just kind of you know trying to visualize all this, you know, maybe a dip down here, and you might be able to get long somewhere down in this level in that area uh, later today, you know, especially once North American trade opens, you get, you know, allow, allow some, uh, allow some, you know, some uh, uh, downside pressure in the equity markets at the open. And, you know, maybe that, maybe that takes out some of that support and then that allows you for, uh, for, for a better, better trade here. So, um, but that, that's kind of what I'm thinking with the Euro. So let's go over to the cable. Now the cable, wow, this has been one day is, wonder. It was, you know, and and I was really surprised that when, you know, we we closed above the 127 level, and 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 it looked like, oh man, you know, here we go, you know, we we closed above 127. Th that was a pretty ugly candle, you know, really long wick, but still, you know, the close above 127. I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe we got to move back up towards 129. We we actually had strong um, manufacturing PMI numbers out of the UK overnight that didn't help the the pound at all and the pound just came you know uh just gets slammed right back down and i guess you know if you think about it while we're you know 
waiting for for the final Brexit vote in Parliament it, it is very risky trying to be long the cable, you know, at at current levels. I mean, you you know, that we have to we have to get the Brexit deal passed Parliament, and if it doesn't, you, you know, the pound's just going to fall apart at the seams. But if you really want to be uh, on the long side, you've got to wait for that that vote to pass. And uh, obviously it hasn't yet. So uh, it is, it, it makes it for a very treacherous, treacherous trade right now. And, and, it, and, and really the pound seems untradeable at this point. You know, if you, if you get caught up trading it, it's going to be probably a pretty difficult, um, it's going to be a difficult trade, no matter, no matter which, which way you're looking at, you know, no matter which way you're looking to trade this thing, it, it, it's, you could, you could be caught on the wrong side pretty easily. I would, I would think, um, you know, we talked about the Aussie, the Aussie is probing the 70 cent level. Uh, we are, we are here at 70 cents. Um, pretty key 127% extension uh, the daily RSI is divergent we're not oversold anymore we were oversold but we're we're just divergent that means in my opinion the Aussie's got some downside here and and you know Dale we're, we're, you know we were just talking about gold well if yeah. gold yeah if gold reverses you know how how's the Aussie going to well you know what's going to happen to the Aussie here you know yeah i mean That's on long term bears are talking 50 cents Blake. You know, I, I'm gonna hope we don't, and and here's yeah. the reason why. If Just if you guys, yeah. well, well, <laughs> if you guys if you guys weren't around um, back in you know 2000, uh, you know 2002, 2000, um, this is when you know this is when I really first started trading the FX market right here. I was trading equities, and then I branched into FX, and I really started trading around th this time frame. When, 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 as Americans, we could start trading in the currency market, which was 2001, 2002 ish. The the Aussie was in the 50 cent range, and the problem with the Aussie is that the volatility was so bad in the Aussie and the Kiwi. Th those pairs, you were lucky if you got a 20 to 30 cent trading range every day when it was trading at that, those levels. I it, can't remember was, that far back, man. God, I mean, there was no, <laughs> there was no, but there was no volatility. I mean, it sucked. Yeah. I, I mean, I they they those were like those pairs are the pairs that I just didn't even focus on. And and you know, once once the Aussie got closer to parity. You know the volatility really started to increase. You know, past the you know the financial crisis, but once we were up, you know, around parity, I mean, things. You know, that that's when the Aussie you, you'd have a hundred pip trading range during during the day. Um, but I really hope we don't get down to fifty cents or down to those levels. Now we may, um, you know, with with the ongoing um, tensions between the U.S. and China, uh, I think the risk is that 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 that's high. You know that that those those currencies see those levels again, but for right now, you know, um, I guess the key is uh, where do we close today? And I think if we can close back above seventy and a quarter, you know, if we can close back above seventy and a quarter, you're going to get some bears that are, have some second thoughts about. Uh, excuse me about being being uh, short the Aussie. I'm I'm not long. Um, I'm actually short uh, the New Zealand Canadian still. So I'm I'm still trading, you know, the, um, you know, short and anapodian type of currency. But I I, I still I, I'd be a little nervous if 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 we close above seventy and a quarter here, in the in the Aussie. Let's take a look at the Kiwi. The Kiwi is actually held up relatively well. We are you know uh, below the fifty percent retracement. Is the Aussies trying to break down? The Kiwi is trying to trying to break down as well. Um, uh, it, but this is another one that I think that if if we close, you know, back above, you know, 67 cents, which, you know, this, this is basically right here, you know, we, we close, you know, back above these levels, you're going to have bears that have second thoughts, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case. I just think that that that's that's that would be the risk with the uh, with the the Kiwi at this point um, the Canadian now we were talking about um, let's talk a little bit about the Canadian uh, the dollar Canadian all right so crude oil has been 
obviously very weak. Uh, and that has allowed for the dollar to Canadian to really rise towards the 618 retracement uh, on a longer term basis. Uh, we, we call it channel resistance up here. Uh, and, and that's, you know, the, we're, we're, you can see how the daily RSI is overbought, we're divergent, um, and we're, we're trading up at these levels. Now, I'm long Canadian dollars. I'm short the New Zealand Canadian. So I, there would be n nothing would make me happier to see the dollar Canadian drop through this support and, you know, drop through, you know, 133, you know, 132 level. You know, that would be awesome. I would be, you know, whistling Dixie at that point in time if, if that should happen. Um, now, I, I was talking with one of our traders in our chat room who's who's pretty active uh, at Nittish about he was saying that the uh, the dollar Canadian is pretty resilient it has but you know the the dollar Canadian I've always looked at it as more of the canary in the coal mine so if it if it is um, if it's strong um, you know that's telling us that there's you know probably more dollar strength to come uh, and if it's if it's weaker then you know vice versa well the thing about the dollar canadian if you if you think about what's happened over the last couple of days the dollar canadian really has been stuck i say last couple of days last couple of trading days the dollar canadian is 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 in actually a fairly tight range it's made its majority of its move um you know two weeks ago so the dollar canadian is just kind of hanging out up here now i'm not bearish the dollar canadian just yet but i think below today's support which is or today's lows which is 135.70 you know you break back below those lows and and we're going to um uh, it's going it's going to offer some some uh some counter trend opportunities maybe you know the the dollar canadians back towards 134 or maybe down towards this breakout point at 13375 i think that's the risk but if you you know you look at the aussies hitting new lows all right so just you know take a look at the difference here you know aussies hitting new lows kiwi hitting new lows dollar canadian not hitting new highs now that's not saying that the dollar canadian cannot hit new highs it it it, it definitely can um, however, it's struggling to make new highs, uh, and it has been for the last couple of days. And so that, to me, is um, is 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 a little bit of a a little bit of a risk to the uh, to the dollar Canadian, especially if we see a reversal, and you know, if we see the euro back, you know, maybe at one fourteen fifty, you know, the Kiwi bounces back above sixty seven cents, as the Aussie, you know, is back above 70 and a quarter you know the dollar canadian could could slump again and i think you got to watch crude too because crude let's let's take a look at, at crude really quick crude is obviously ex, you know extremely bearish uh but look at the divergent relative strength now the divergent relative strength and let me The divergent relative strength is doing one of two things. It's either it you know it, it's either going to allow for a bigger bounce in in crude, or relative strength is now moderated and we can get another leg lower. Um, now we are talking about crude oil, and um, and and crude has had a. I mean, we've lost almost 50% of our value since September. I mean, if you look at the move, I mean, we're down. 40% from the highs just in the last couple of months. And that's a pretty massive move in, in crude. And now do, do, do I'm, I'm actually longer term. I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that, that believe that crude oil is going to, you know, the fossil fuel is going to eventually, you know, not, uh, it's going to be worth less and less and less, but uh, you know, th that doesn't mean crude oil is going to go to zero either. Um, crude oil, will always be traded as a as a vehicle uh in my opinion because you're going to have outputs adjust you know and and you know yes i think that you know the middle east is going to you know is is going to suffer as a result um you know as as, as crude oil is you know used less uh moving forward blah 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 all the the, the macro things behind um crude but i don't know if the, this this price 
fall in crude oil, it's probably going to revert back to the mean, meaning it's probably going to bounce at some point. Um, you know, whether it's here or whether it's at 40 bucks, I don't know. You know, maybe it makes it all the way down to $37 before it, before it bounces. But I, I'd be a little nervous about being too aggressively short crude down at these levels, uh, in my opinion. So, um, but but if crude does bounce, you know, that, that could be, you know, the catalyst that drives the dollar Canadian, um, you know, back towards – back towards the 136 and maybe back below, you know, 135.70 or, you know, the, the, the support down here. Um, so that's just something else that I'm, I'm paying a little bit of attention to. Wow. The dollar yen continues to just get blasted here. We're approaching uh, a 618 retracement. Take a look at this dollar yen. I mean, these yen pairs are really under pressure. I tried to play the Euro yen to the long side. And, and when I tried to play counter trend here, I was trying. I was playing really small size because you know this is obviously a really big sell-off here. Um, but man, we are below all of the support down here. So the euro yen just getting absolutely crushed. And I don't know why this. I don't even know what that is doing there. Let me get rid of that. But man, this euro yen is really is really breaking down, breaking through some support here. So pretty pretty bearish price action, not only in the. Uh, in the the euro yen but look at the dollar yen and the dollar yen um the 618 comes in at 108.42 so that might be the next area of support here and the euro is trying to crack so you can see how the euro is coming down uh we're getting close to those that 80 level where you might be able to find some support down here around 80. I might try to pick up uh, try to pick up some euro down here if we get down here here in the next couple of minutes. So we'll see. Um, Dale, are you still there? Lost him a few minutes ago. Not sure. I'm, if you... I'm here, buddy. Okay. All right. Not 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 sure if you had any comments of anything I was saying. I, I just had, hadn't heard from you. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I took I skyped. Uh, you know, I oh, commodity, okay. commodity kidneys. Ah, okay. <laughs> so got it, got it. All so right. we're, we got we got the. Uh, let's watch the euro as we come down into the support here. So watch watch the one thirteen eighty level. I might pick up just a little bit down here. S and P's under pressure. Yeah, I see how they're breaking lower here. Uh, I picked up a little bit at 84 on the euro dollar. You know, right here, let me reset this. Looking for a scalp here. I'm yeah, you know, if I, you know, if I can get it back above 114, you know, I, I don't, I don't mind being long a little bit here. Like I said, it's, you know, we, we've got, you know, it might come down into the 70s. Um, you know, it's entirely possible. Maybe uh, back to 1420 80. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, huh? so, something yeah. of that. Yeah, something, something like that. Nothing, nothing too, too crazy here. But uh, you know, when it comes to risk right now, and you were talking all the early Blake, I hope it's only a trade war with China because there's been. I I know you know you're a military guy, but I don't know if you've been reading about all the confrontations that are happening around those Spratly Islands with uh, U.S. carriers. And uh, uh, it almost seems like, you know, we're at war, uh, like war games going on, um, Real, not trade war, but military stuff happening between us and China. I hope it doesn't lead to anything, but uh, they're, you know, both the U.S. and China are flexing their naval muscle right now yeah. and it's dangerous because you know when things like that happen accidents can happen all the all generals say that you know when that stuff is happening something could occur by accident you right. know uh, and and that concerns me does it i mean i mean yeah. i mean yeah well i mean i mean it's entirely it's entirely possible it's definitely a scary time i mean they're boasting about how they could take out our carriers with their new weapons they actually built weapons to take out carriers and i saw a u.s uh, admiral say that yeah we are vulnerable to those weapons so uh you know uh it's, you know, when in a bear market, and I, I don't think we're going to have a long-term bear market in equities, but they, the expression is, in a bull market, anything that goes wrong doesn't. 
and in a bear market it does so, so you, you don't you don't think we're going to have a we're going to you don't think we're going to be in a longer term bear market uh, I think uh, that there's going to be a place to buy these, and I actually think there's a chance that, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, we have some smart guys. Uh, Grega is talking about this just being a, a way for pullback and that we could get new highs eventually. Uh, so, you know, uh, I think that is a possibility. I don't know where the load's going to come in on uh, the S&Ps. Uh, you know, I think... I don't have to know. I think the charts will tell us when we're bottoming. I just don't think we're there yet. Yeah. But yeah, I think there's going to be a nice recovery uh, in the S&Ps. And uh, I actually think we could trade 3,200 sometime, um, maybe in the spring. So, wow. And I think that would wow. be the big surprise. Yeah. That that would be, uh, that would, I would not expect that to happen. That would be the last yeah. thing I would expect to happen, actually. So I think Greg, I think. So, and, and you know, I respect Greg's work a lot, and there, there, you know, I do a lot of intelligence gathering, and there are a lot of people that say um, it's not uh, a beginning of a bear market because we haven't had the inflation move. But I don't think that happens until we get a dollar top. So, so this, so, is, this, you know, this we, is this, this is his, uh, you know, yeah. long term monthly view of, uh, and, and if, you know, right. you want to see like what his Elliott Wave views are like longer term. Uh, those yeah. are them. So that, that'd be interesting. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so, um, you know, I was going to say, uh, I, I think Polly's going to come in and, uh, and say a few things. Uh, Polly, are you yeah. here? I think we have to upgrade him to uh, oh. presenter. Oh, so raise your he, hand. He's probably he's a, in, in as a, I think he's in as he's a, an uh, attendee. No, he's oh, an no, organizer. I can see him. Paul, are you here? I can't. Uh, we can't hear you. By the way, you might have muted your own mic. Mm, yeah, he, he's not muted from our side for sure. No, no. But I think he, he he has had the same problem before, which I don't understand why, because he he can speak just fine on the European crossover webinar. Uh, yes, you're here, but we we can't hear you if you if you're speaking to us. We can't hear you. Yeah, he can't. Uh, we can't hear him. Well, Blake, you know, if you have to run, uh, well, no, said, I know. Well, I know Steve is here. Um, yeah. or Steve, Steve's oh, here. And I know, yeah, I'm here too. Good morning. Okay. Oh, good morning, yeah. Good morning, Sidley. Happy New Year, yeah. Stel. Yep. Happy New Year, Coach. Yeah. All right, Happy buddy. New Year, buddy. Let, wait, let's hold on. We're going to make Polly a presenter and just because we want him to see if this makes a difference. See if he, uh, He's logged in as an organizer, but let's see if he. Uh, uh, Blake, he's yeah. logged in twice. He's logged in twice, actually. He's oh. also as, as an attendee. Oh, well then. Then probably that's the account he means. Yes. So let's do that. Uh, yeah. Let me let me make that one a presenter. Wait. Sounds good. Are you OK? Sounds good. Steve uh, was singing okay, opera. Hey, we can hear you now, Polly. Hi, Polly. Okay, I just needed to be made as presenter. Um, let me see. Hang on one second. Dan there we go. Oh. I think he got it now. Is yeah, it, you see yeah, yeah. Now? We totally yeah, see buddy. We can We can hear you and see you just fine, Polly. Okay, great, great. Um, yo, uh, we were talking actually this earlier this morning when we did the European crossover, which is at 3 a.m. Eastern. I mean, I apologize at uh, 4 a.m. Eastern, but uh, we were looking actually at the dollar yen, and uh, I had done the work, uh, the analysis uh, before as we we're getting ready to come in toward actually the new year. But uh, I was looking for 929, but in this this morning, uh, while we were doing the uh, European crossover webinar, we were actually trading at 875, and we were talking about this would be a good area to at least, if you're short, at least lighten up on those positions. And we did get a rally back up to 930, almost 930, uh, and we paired back. But if you look here on the uh, – uh, let's take a look here on the weekly chart on the dollar-yen – we actually have some pretty cute key support here on a closing basis right here at 905. You can see that coming right across here at 905. So I think I've, 
I feel that the market will be able to close above 905, but for today on a daily chart, we do have good support here, which came in at 875. That's exactly where we were at the time of the European crossover. Now, like I said, I didn't expect this to, you know, at the time when I was doing the analysis, uh, I was pointing out that the 929 level here and confluence with the 957, but when we did the European crossover, we'd already broken through the, the 9 level. But this 875 provides some good support here. I think we'll probably hold, but obviously the the ferocity of the move with the S&P. And one of the things I was uh, going to mention or, or um, piggyback on the Dale was mentioning when the when I was looking at in the Asian session and the Aussie was already starting to slide back, we'll take a look at the Aussie. And Blake made a good point too about it being at 70.27. That's a huge weekly support. But one of the things I saw here was some comments coming out of China uh, about the, you know, Taiwan, and that they were saying that uh, Taiwan is uh, they felt has always been a part of China. And in regards to the reunif uh, reunification, I was thinking one of the things I think that might be a reason why the S and P's might be a little bit lower. You know, the, they're supposed to, the administration in China is supposed to get together with a meeting to try and resolve this terror stuff. And Trump was saying uh, he thinks things are going to be okay or they're looking great so far. But I'm thinking, alluding back to what Dale is saying, uh, with China ramping up all these comments uh, regarding Taiwan, I think that kind of throws a monkey wrench in it and probably has the market a little bit concerned about that and why we're seeing these S&Ps, you know, take a tumble even further and obviously here on the uh, Aussie we're just below 70 cents I wouldn't be surprised on a weekly close if we close below 70 cents but if we get some good news afterwards with the tariffs which I think they will and the market will use as excuse we can you know rally back up so I think it's a good possibility I said this in the analysis uh, even in the uh, analysis that we have here on uh, FX analytics uh, go back in here. Well, I'm off, off the screen right now. But uh, we were talking about it possibly closing uh, closing below the 70 cents and then uh, turn around and coming right back up the following week. But I think that that's probably where we're having those problems with the Aussie and why it's kind of on the a bit on the back foot and now we're below uh, 70 cents. And I think those uh, comments from China probably – Threw a bit of a monkey wrench in there, and now we're thinking, oh, you know what? Maybe things won't be so well after the the trade tariff talks. It's uh, it's just going to make a, a situation worse. One of the things that some people had asked about was on the uh, on the gold market. Now we cover the XAU, and if you look here on the gold, and we're looking on the weekly basis, we're actually, as Blake said, we came into the 61 percent. We have some resistance there, but we have a nice little zone between 1293 and 1304, and Depending on what the dollar does on NFP day, I really wouldn't be surprised if we're able to go in and, and jump up to this 13. And then from there, we'll probably ease back a little bit. Uh, we were talking about this for the last, I guess, about more than three weeks ago when gold was trading at 1257 or 1252. And we were talking about I wouldn't I didn't know why gold had not appreciated more in light of the volatility that we'd seen in the equities. But finally, we're starting to go in and follow through even though the dollar itself has moved higher. But we are into some a uh, bit of a resistance here with uh, 1287 here on the 61% of this entire move of 1160 to 1365 in the XAU. But you can see right here, this 1293, I think this is where you actually find a little bit of resistance, but depending on what happens after NFP, I could see us make one more jump in here and uh, tag that 13. Just get above 13 before we see the market maybe pull back a little bit uh, further here. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, you have any other additional comments, Dale. One thing looking here on the dollar index, we are into some uh, resistance here. Actually, uh, when you look at it on the daily in the cash dollar index, and we are just above that. I hear. I like your charts, Bolly. Oh, thank you. Uh, but here you can see right here, we're just above this daily yeah. close resistance. And boy, did we have a heck of a turnaround. 96.44 uh, is actually the 38% of this recent move back. But you can see it's going to be pretty key if we're able to get above this 96, even right here, if you want to call it 96.58. I don't think we'll be able to close above that on a daily close, but it'd be pretty key if we're able to. But uh, if you look at it here, which 
I like to look at the two hour charts, but uh, we had right here 96.47, 96.56 slash 58 is the daily resistance. So I think we could probably ease back a little bit. Certainly the euro, one of the levels that we were looking at, and actually uh, I stepped in, I actually bought it 14.02 and I added uh, down here at the same time with when Blake did. Uh, we were looking actually on the euro coming into today, uh, and that was before we opened up so strong. I was looking at, at 1402, 1402 being the area where they would step in and try and defend that. But again, then again, we opened up very strongly. Uh, we were actually covering this on, and we were already pulling back at the time. We were, I think, at 1440 on the European crossover. But we already got this little, uh, and I was saying at the time, I don't know if you want to call it a shooting star or maybe a gravestone, don't you? Because it isn't after a huge rally. But you can see it was certainly a bear setup. And if you look at our exponential moving averages, we'd actually already turned much lower from the 1440s and stayed just that way. Same thing here on the five minute on our exponential moving averages. With uh, one of the things, and I'm talking like a 90 miles an hour, but one of the things we've seen over the last few months in FX is we just don't see these good moves where the markets just trend and trend. Uh, we've talked about this several times. You get the uh, three steps forward and then two steps back or two steps forward, one step back. So I've gone back to using these exponential moving averages and they are able to catch the short term trend where you can see the market start to turn. And you can see here, whether you're looking on the 30 minute, which will generate a sell signal, I guess around 1438 and it stayed that way and the euro remains under pressure. But this has been the one thing that uh, has kind of kept me in, in uh, decent sides of the market because, like I said, these trends don't seem to last very long. Um, getting back to the dollar CAD, uh, what Blake had pointed out here also is uh, we had a resistance here today at 36.44, but there's still, when you look at on the weekly, and we, were, we had that on our um, analysis to coming into NFP, there's a chance that we can uh, make a run, run up there on F NFP today, NFP day at 37.15. So watch that on the dollar on the dollar CAD. Okay. And uh, only other thing is also here on the uh, on the bonds, we are into some pretty good resistance. This is actually right here if you look at right there 46.28 so once again with the with this uh, equities being under so much pressure they stretch this pretty much for all this worth you can see pretty good solid close resistance here on the bonds at 46.28 uh we might start to see this thing ease back a little bit uh the boons certainly got further than what i even thought here they made the it boons, wow. the boons have broken, uh, the boons have broken out actually from a yeah, major they, uh, yeah no you're right you're right about that because i was looking at it here on the daily and look at this Boy, that's there is a huge, huge resistance. There is, there is a huge descending channel that has um, uh, that has it in in essence uh, encapsulated all, all the corrective price action since uh, let's say 2016 because uh, the boons uh, peaked uh, at September 2016 and we've uh, we've spent a huge period consolidating in a clearly corrective move lower uh, since then. And, um, you know, 164 was the line in the sand um, because it was previous highs and it would definitely confirm a break above this descending channel. And we seem to be breaking above it with uh, with some real momentum today. So I'm what's it measure, Steve, like 170 ish or something like that? I, longer term? I have I haven't even measured it because yeah. there's no point. I mean, it's the, the target. The target of this move is is much, much, much higher to even con you know, to even care about it at, uh, at uh, you know, at, at the current uh, juncture. Um, so um, I, I'm guessing that a lot of this momentum we're seeing today is also uh, stop losses getting uh, tripped over because, you know, a lot of people were looking uh, at this, this area, the 164 area as a line in the sand. And now that we're crossing above it, uh, doesn't look like um, it, it's going to be easy for the Bunch to reverse course, which makes me a little bit more skeptical about what kind of a move we will see here um, unfold in, in the treasuries as well. Obviously, they're not 100% correlated. There's no question about it. And, you know, the, the two economies <clears throat> and, and their monetary policies, most importantly, have been diverging. Um, although I do believe that, uh, uh, you know, the, mon the monetary um, policy from the side of the Fed is not... Uh, going to remain um, 
um, let, let's say they're, they're not going to keep tightening one way or another uh, through 2019. So I believe there is going to be within 2019 some kind of a convergence uh, between the monetary um, policy approaches between the two central banks. But regardless, I think one of the things I wanted to show is definitely the huge breakout in the bonds, because I think that this is something that you should take notice. One of the things, and I, yeah, I agree with you, one of the things we did have uh, some bad German data come out, and I think it's uh, <clears throat> now, it looks like the market is starting to really grab hold of that. And it's, it's uh, we have so many, it, it, we have so many cross currents. It reminds me what Blake was saying. I think it was, I don't know if it was on the week ahead video. You know, he doesn't want to necessarily be, and I mentioned also is that I don't think that the move is going to be so much based on the euro as opposed to maybe, you know, based on if the dollar decides to go in and pull back. But the problem is, is that with uh, with the the data that we're starting now, we did get some good Italian PMI. That was actually a surprise there. But the German data, and everybody knows that Germany is a hub of the uh, eurozone, is you know, we've already had bad auto figures for a while. It probably pretends that this is probably going to, and probably what we're seeing this breakout is something that's going to lead for several months. Even if the U.S. is going to pull back the euro, the eurozone might still be a, quite a struggle. And why I think that, I, you know, I think that these moves in these currencies is going to continue to be the same thing. And I'm talking about specifically the euro is, you know, three steps forward, two steps back, two steps forward, one step back. It's just you, these trends and these moves don't last very long, and then they quickly dissipate. And I think that when we opened up at 115, I was surprised to see us open up that strong. I thought it had probably a little bit of a, if you want to call it a hangover, a positive hangover about the Italian budget being passed. But the realization is, and then when this German data comes out, at the end of the day, how do we stand? And they did get good Italian PMIs, but how does how does a, a overall a health of that eurozone economy stand and it doesn't stand so well and then you've got the concerns of brexit too so it's easier to go on and you know let the euro slide the, back the problems the problems in the eurozone is are mostly political poly because uh many people don't realize but if if we made the assumption that the completion of the eurozone would have been uh concluded in the past so if the eurozone had ended up becoming uh, besides the monetary, a fiscal union as well. So there was centralized um, uh, fiscal managing and some centralized uh, economy managing. Uh, I would very easily argue against anybody that the Eurozone would be in a much, much, much better situation uh, from a fiscal standpoint uh, in comparison to the US. So if there were not the potential huge problems that can keep arising and will probably keep arising on, a, on the political side um, with many countries trying to uh, gain uh, benefits by, for example, uh, trying to blackmail, as we saw Greece doing in the past, uh, Italy trying more or less to do the same thing, uh, France try, uh, fr trying to um, get some kind of a different treatment, etc., etc. And who knows uh, what else we're going to see uh, when the next recession hits, because uh, we're going to see a lot more populist governments trying to promise, uh, you know, uh, citizens that they can, you know, they can offer them, you know, a lot more and they can gain a lot more from the European um, budget, you know, to to assist, you know, any given country. Um, I, I, I would I would definitely be both hands along the euro, but uh, the political dangers and the risks are huge. And that is why the euro keeps uh, underperforming the U.S. Yeah, but once again, like I said, the, the moves don't last very long. I would have expected the euro, it had the opportunity to move. Uh, and we've seen those moves in the past over the last few years where, you know, you'd, you'd make a good run for about 200, 285 pips. And before the market comes back, you, you digest, we come back, we, you know, basically reload the cannons and you go back and try and attack those highs again, see if there's something there. But like I said, this, if you look at this, um, I think that this does go, go pointed out. Every time about ready to break out, the market turns around and falls apart. Knowing uh, it's going to fall apart, we turn around and bounce back up. And if you look at this, it's just up and down like a freaking yo-yo. And why I think you have to, if you're going to trade this, you really have to focus on a little bit more on the shorter term because until proven wrong, these moves just simply don't last. And like I, I, said, I just, agree with you. I agree with you. And knowing how USD-centric 
uh, the forex market is. My assumption is that within 2019, uh, this um, the, this market environment that we had in effects, which is exactly what you're describing, uh, is going to change dramatically. I believe we're gonna uh, go towards the complete opposite direction, and in my opinion, the trigger point for that is going to be when the market realizes how overpriced the US dollar is. Uh, based on uh, expectations of monetary policy that are never going to be fulfilled. I believe that we're going to have a, a U-turn in market expectations at some point uh, during 2019, and then the market will need to reprice a lot of things in a very short period of time. And that, I believe, is going to be the trigger for us to start having some very nice, uh, trendy uh, FX markets. Uh, at least that's my... First day of uh, the year um, assumption. Looking forward, uh, prognosis. Let's call it. Yeah, I agree. I I, but, but so far, you know, just certainly hasn't materialized. But uh, I, to me, I believe the pivot's going to be NFP, where we can finally start to see, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, a sustained move once we get a move. But I think it's going to be important uh, with the <clears throat> cash cash dollar index. To me, uh, we talked about on the European crossover, when we get to NFP day, to me, I think it's going to be about this 96.47 area here. If we can slide back below that on a two-hour close, then we can go back to tacking the lows. And it's, I think you said, like you, you, you said correctly, and I think it's really going to be a matter of perception. The, the further we go lower and lower here in the S&Ps, at some point, you have to wonder, and I would think the same thing, why I was surprised why gold had not responded before is, is you're going to go in and catch a different view of these U.S. assets where people, as you say, start to question it. And maybe, like you say, it develops, starts to develop a little bit more of a momentum where people question what the Fed's going to be doing. And then you go, you uh, Dale made a good point about a bull market. Well, I think at that point, maybe you start to look at the glasses half empty, meaning, well, okay, well, maybe the economy's still doing well, but the Fed's not going to be able to do this. And eventually, we're probably going to slow down. And what happens with housing prices? And it starts to garner some momentum. Also, the concern with crude oil, the, the move that we've seen, you know, the extent of this move so fast that certain areas of the economy, certainly in, in Texas, are going to sustain some pretty good weakness. I think it was uh, someone who pointed out, this is about a couple of months ago, that Bloomberg did a story, and, and I saw that it says, uh, as goes Dallas, so goes the, the country. And it was pointing out that how the housing, you know, valuations have boomed and boomed, but most recently, <clears throat> we weren't getting those bids anymore, and people started to hold on. And we're starting yeah, to see uh, offers come auto, in. Auto, auto industry and market and housing industry already uh, have been showing uh, very worrying signs during the past like four, five, six months. And you know those are those are usually leading indicators of the state of the consumer, right? I, I agree, and I, it's just a matter before we start. And to see. And, and anyhow, over indebted consumer. So that's that's another issue to consider here. So, so really, the the important thing for for NFP is to see if um, the you know if the if 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 the jobs growth um, is also going really, to reverse. Yes. If, if it does reverse, and if it does reverse, then I think you're going to start to see those you know the the cracks in the uh, in the U.S. dollar, if you will. I think you're going to start to see the U.S. dollar maybe uh, the you know some of this the strength. Uh, back off a little bit but for right now i mean the dollar is still very strong and it's it's it, it's hard to fade i mean you can see i picked up the euro a little while ago and it's you know things really really under pressure you know no, absolutely you know I've, especially... I've seen a lot of inflection points on the nfp and uh, the dollar so i would love to see the dollar pushing against the highs and taking them out into the nfp uh, for an inflection point so me too dale especially considering yeah. that during the last session of the year that we had you know uh, completely liquid uh, uh, completely liquid environment of course we got all those false moves i mean the cable broke above uh, 137 falsely the euro uh, opened up. I, I, I think there, there were even some pre-market quotes at 115.40 in the euro USD yesterday. So, uh, and a, a false break there in the euro as well. All those are, um, you know, signs, as you said, that in the short term uh, we might see some more dollar strength coming in the market. So, I wouldn't try to fade the dollar in the short term, seeing those false breaks. Uh, but I would uh, later on. Uh, 
because I do believe that this this is this year is not going to be a year that will be able to sustain uh, dollar strength. Hey, you know, um, another another chart that actually got my uh, my attention, and um, it's just because Stelios in our chat room, he had he had mentioned that uh, the 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 pound yen, the guppy, was down two hundred and some odd pips um, for the day. Uh, you know, the 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 pound yen is actually coming in some pretty pretty key levels of support. Let me let me go ahead and um, I'm going to take over really quick. Okay. Paul, so I can show I can show you guys what I'm I'm looking at here. Uh, to yeah okay so so here's the pound yen and the pound yen coming into 127 percent extension of this the, this entire move up from from the august lows to the november highs 127 percent extension comes in just below where we're at at 137.36 uh the 618 retracement post brexit lows uh to the highs come in at one, uh, 137 basically so uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the you know the pound yen obviously is under pressure right now it's it's difficult to, to run out and start buying something with a big red bar like that however I, I would really start to think that 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 we might get a bounce soon in the pound yen I think it's 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 doable you know so just I think you got to be careful especially when we're down 200 pips intraday you know what I mean so that's that's one of those things that I think that uh, that that you you can start, especially if we if we push to a brand new low, like 137.30s, 137.20, you might be able to see you know might be able to see a reversal here. Well, hey, I, I know we have in just a few minutes, and, and by the way, we are uh, oversold relative strength wise, divergent on the the pound yen. Just just if you guys can't can't see that, um, I want to say. Um, uh, Dale, you have an interview coming up, yep. And and I just want to say Happy New Year to everybody who is with us today, and welcome back if you're coming off of your your breaks. I know um, this week is 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 a full trickle back into the markets. Um, you'll have a lot of uh, people that are actually out throughout the course of this week as they they're wrapping up their their holiday travels. Um, but I just want to say. Um, uh, Happy New Year to everybody listening. Thank you so much for your continued support. For those of you that are Forex Analytics subscribers, thank you so much for, for your support with our product and being part of our family. And uh, and, and remember, if you guys haven't uh, visited Forest Park FX, they're located right here. Um, you know, you can you can end up getting Forex Analytics for th free through your through the reimbursement program, quite possibly depending on how much trading you do. So make sure you reach out to them. It's it's under our reimbursement program right here. And if you're in the United States and you want to, um, and you're not in Europe or Asia and you can't be involved in the reimbursement program, well, you can get some, you know, possibly cash back rebates for your trading. So make sure you uh, reach out to um, Forest Park FX. So uh, with that being said, uh, Dale, I'm going to, I'm going to pass it over to you because Blake, I know, Blake, yes, I'm, I'm going to grab it for a couple of minutes before the interview to show a couple of things fast. And oh, then I'll pass okay. it to Dale. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, you know, I look forward to another year of us building up and edifying traders every day. And uh, I feel like we've been accomplishing that uh, for quite some time now. And the team has never been stronger. And what a great uh, thing to have Paulie in here with us today so people could see what kind of great levels that Paulie points out every day to our European clients and U.S. people that get up early and Asian, uh, our Asian members that stay up late. So, yeah, uh, yeah uh, Paulie's a pro. Thank you, and, and and thanks, Dale, and and um, we're 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 really proud of the team that we have here at Forex Analytics. And yeah, if you guys are Forex Analytics subscribers and you can tune in at 4 a.m. Eastern every day to the European crossover, you got to do so with Paul Franco. So, all right, thanks, guys. Even, even right, those who can't, we we said we said immediately the uh, video just, just for our clients. Yeah, the link. Uh, to the video uh, so they can watch it when they uh, wake up and then we said it with everybody but you know uh, and many many hours later so if you want to you know catch up uh, Paul is uh, usually short-term uh, view on the markets uh, you can do it immediately after you wake up the recording is going to be there for you if you are a Forex Analytics subscriber so a couple of things I wanted to show uh, coach uh, that are interesting one 
Uh, you remember it was quite clear yeah. what's going to happen with copper here. I'm, I'm, I'm still short copper. We got multiple attempts to retest yeah. uh, this area, and, and but you know the price action was very, very clearly corrective, and yeah. I feel quite nicely with being short here. Uh, I, I got myself a nice um, level, and I, I think it's going to do fine, and I think it's, it can easily uh, you know reach my target at 245. The other thing I wanted good to patience, show. Good patience, Steve. Very good. Yeah, patience. it's you know it, it's yeah. required. There's no alternative. Uh, and really, you have one... to stop singing opera on the weekend so that we have your voice here Monday through Friday. <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I promise. I promise. <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to show is that every single I was I was writing that earlier actually in the uh, in the chat room, uh, every single of the pound uh, pound and uh, euro um, crosses against Aussie and Kiwi. Um, are at quite important levels. The pound kiwi, I had also pushed an update for that at the last day of the year. Uh, the pound kiwi, after reaching the inverted head and shoulders uh, formation target, it seems to be turning lower and might even be breaking the lower wedge. The pound Aussie uh, also seems to be in a wedge getting rejected from the 61.8. Uh, and as you see, RSI is clearly yeah. diverging. Um, the euro Aussie, uh, after a very nice recovery, has has reached the previous uh, highs once again, and it might also be in a wedge. You can clearly see the other side divergence as well. So euro is a very nice uh, area to get rejected also. And the euro kiwi has also stalled at the 50% fib of the previous move, uh, created a wedge, retested the high, has even the possibility of creating a double top here. RSI also diverging here. So uh, bottom line, I would pay attention to those crosses uh, because there is a decent possibility that we're going to see um, a pullback from here. So those those were the uh, pairs I wanted to, um, uh, you know, to, to, to focus my attention very briefly um, today. So I don't want to bleed anymore into your interview. I have more things to talk okay, about, fine. but we can do that tomorrow. Hopefully, my voice is going to be uh, better tomorrow, and I will be able to uh, speak for longer. So, get happy get new year, everybody! More. Yeah, ha happy new year, everybody, uh, <laughs> once again. And you know, let's make it count. And happy first uh, interview of the uh, uh, year, Dale. We have another 200 and something coming ahead. Okay. So I hope I hope you've you've charged your batteries. <laughs> yeah, they they are they're ever ready, buddy. Okay. Ever ready, okay. like the bunny. So okay. get a chalkboard, Steve, and stop talking. And uh, uh, look forward to hanging out with you again this year. And I, I do believe you give the best review when you have a voice of the whole board every morning. So uh, everyone, uh, without further ado, hello, Chase. I'm going to make you the presenter. Looking forward to meeting you and hearing you. And happy New Year to you, Chase Taylor at Pine Crow Pine Cone Macro. So you'll see a drop down menu for you, Chase, where you can unmute yourself. And it uh, looks like uh, we have you up there, the forest for the trees. I like that. I use that uh, for our sponsor, Forest Park. So uh, waiting to hear your voice, Chase. Let me see if I have you muted. Uh, Dale, I have unmuted him. Uh, it now says self-muted. OK. But so he's from his side. All right, so there is a uh, drop-down menu for you, Chase, to mm -hmm. open up your mic. Ah, no, oh, you're no, calling no. in. I think he's calling he's in. He's on now. Hi, Chase. Hey, guys, you guys Yeah. There he is. Hi, uh, Chase. Hey, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, buddy. Very nice to meet you. Uh, let me start off with why pine cone. Uh, I don't know if you're in familiar America. with uh, Mark, Mark Spitznagel or not, but... um. He, he wrote a book called The Dow Capital, where he goes into a lot of detail about sort of the, the strategy of pine cones, which is sounds odd, but is, is actually really fascinating. Um, and I, I just found that really compelling, and uh, that was kind of the origin story. And I've, I've been writing a free newsletter for a while and um, write a lot about pine trees and pine forests and use a lot of uh, analogies for, for markets and just kind of stuff. I love those trees. So does it have anything to do with uh, uh, the geometric, uh, uh, the geometric nature so, of pine cones and how it may apply to the markets? 
Yeah, I, so I have written a little bit about that, the Fibonacci sequence and, and pine cones, it's, um, okay. but a lot of it has to do with uh, the, the fact that fire is good for a, a lot of a lot of pine trees. Is something I, I found very interesting. Uh, okay. Many different species of pine trees they they can't even they can't even spread uh, their seeds unless it, there's a, there's a for, you know a forest fire, which wow. is just interesting. They they find opportunity and and disaster in, in that way. So oh, no, I, it's like the Chinese be. Chinese definition of opportunity, danger exactly, and opportunity. Uh, very interesting. So before we get going on some of your views and your looks here, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your entree into the trading business or uh, newsletter writing business? So how did you get started? What were you doing prior? Sure. So uh, also a military guy. Um, Air Force. Okay. Uh, I started trading in in '08. Um, Good timing. Before, before, yeah, yeah. <laughs> before before that, I never really had any interest. But then, whenever the financial crisis kind of hit, I started getting interested in in, in economics. Uh, and I kind of started out in the Austrian school, learning economics, not not trading. And then uh, over time, just started trading a little bit here and there. I naturally, like most people, got got killed early on um, but just whenever I found macro and, and started learning the, the different ways to take you know geopolitics and uh, macroeconomics mix them all together with markets and not to mention you know the uh, psychology side and everything else it, it just started to really click for me and I, I just love it so I ever since I started really digging into to, to the macro side of I've just been trading more and more um, but you know, no business school or anything, just self-taught, self-taught trader and, and, and macro analyst. Um, okay. And been, been so doing the writing stuff for about a year or two only. So, okay. So, uh, your influence is, uh, what, what was the gentleman's name who wrote about, uh, pine trees and pine cone? I, I'm not familiar nope. with his name. It's a uh, Mark Spitznagel. Uh, he Good. runs a, like a, a tell, a tell hedge strategy, uh, hedge fund. Okay. Um, U Universa is the name of his fund, but he, he's written, he wrote a book and he has another one coming out sometime this year. But uh, I, I just, I like his, he's not really a macro guy either. It's just, uh, he's worked with uh, uh, Talib in the past doing the, some of the, the tail hedging strategies. Okay. All right. So uh, I see you have Dr. Copper up here who looks like uh, uh, he needs uh maybe a doctor himself uh uh what what is your work telling you i see the triangle that you have kind of similar to what our steve volge had very classical triangle breakdown and retest uh, uh why don't you go ahead and tell us uh what your views are and maybe what the macro implications of what you're seeing from copper may be sure um yeah, I had this one outlined and was kind of waiting for this for the same trade to happen. So whenever he mentioned it, I, I was happy to see that because it, it it looks like a clear technical breakdown and it just makes sense from a macro point of view with global growth slowing and then and China kind of leading that leading that down. So I, I think this one probably has has a long way to run, uh, at least possibly. And backing out to a weekly, kind of right right on top of that 200 week right now. So that's going to be it's going to be big to see what happens there. And there's some support here. So it'll be interesting. And then here there is, there is a horizontal level that I think is kind of my, my target to get down to around, around this, this level. Okay. To see what happens, but yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's, so, uh, uh, copper, a uh, kind of a sign of, uh, you know, what's happening in China, you know, having been in the military, were you, uh, a pilot? In the Air Force? No. Or? So I actually did a few different things. I worked on aircraft. Um, okay. On uh, carriers? Also did a lot of in, in, what's that? Uh, were you, did you work on aircraft on, on aircraft carriers? No. Uh, so I worked on B-1 bombers. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, out, yeah. out in Texas. Uh, All right. I did, I did some intelligence work, the geospatial intelligence, which is basically imagery intelligence. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and also some... Some work in some research laboratories. So you were using charts in the military, in no. some way, weren't you? Uh, not, not really. Although it, it was always fun to, yeah, 
you know, before a, a missile launch in North Korea or something, and just kind of pull up a chart of gold and see what happened to it or something like that. But but now I've never really used them in yeah. professionally though. All right. Well, you brought up gold, so uh, you know my my statement for gold and copper. The difference between them is uh, copper is about construction, and gold's about destruction. So uh, I see you have it up there on your screen. We've had a very nice run. Are you interpreting uh, this move in gold that we've had recently as uh, the beginning of a new bull market or uh, merely uh, an impressive bear market rally from the $200 decline that we had starting last year from 1360 and then a low at 1160? Yeah, so I've really struggled with this move. It because it looks it looks so good technically, but it I, I I'm a I've been a pretty hardcore dollar bull for about two years now, and I, and I still am, although it's, it's it's getting harder and harder to be in some ways. So because I'm because I am so dollar bullish, it, it, I'm kind of struggling to be to think this move's real. But on a technical basis, I mean it's been nearly perfect. Um, but I still think the dollar has some room to run. Uh, what I think a lot of people don't realize is historically, whenever China is leading leading a downturn, that that tends to make the dollar more of a more of a safe haven than it is at other times. Um, Interesting. If anywhere in the rest of the world was doing well enough to take some capital from the U.S., I, I would have a lot different view of the dollar. But it, as long as the Fed's going to keep QT going and going to keep sucking up dollar liquidity, I it's hard for me to be anything but a dollar bull with the rest of the world slowing down perhaps harder than than we are right now. So because of all that, I, I still think that the that gold's likely to have a, another leg down before, before it can really have the bull. But okay. it's, like I say, in technically it, it's been the, the way it chewed up the 200 day moving average and a lot of different horizontal, uh, you know, levels. This has, has been impressive, but, you see my chart there. It kind of has like a mini parabola going, which concerns me. So if it breaks yeah. out of, down out of that, I, I would actually look short of. Okay, uh, interesting. Uh, I learned something from you already, Chase, about the fact that it's hard to fade the dollar when uh, there are economic problems in China, and uh, you know we'll see if China can resolve it. I, I just want to get off course a little bit because my friend, who you know uh, is always looking at you know potential um, you know black swan events. You have any view on what's happening in? Uh, the South China Sea and what's happening on the oceans uh, around the Spratly Islands and, you know, challenges between the U.S. and and China on the open waters. Do you have a view on that? Um, a little bit. So I don't feel like I have any insight on, on how bad it could get or anything. But one, one thing I do find interesting is um, Steve Bannon, who probably still has the president's ear, I, I would think, it has kind of long, long been a an advocate for being very aggressive with the South China Sea. Um, his, his take is that the president should tell China to de-weaponize those islands or we would do it for them, which, you know, I, I don't think anyone at the Pentagon would be too excited to go for that at the moment. But okay, ju just, right. just knowing that such an influential advisor for the president has that, has that take. Uh, okay, you know, Navarro and Navarro on the economic front. So you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, trade, trade war and who knows what kind, what it leads to. So uh, perhaps we could take a look at your dollar chart. Uh, I, you know, I understand that it feels like uh, you know this move is long in the tooth. Do you have any kind of uh, upside targets uh, in the dollar that, uh, if you were long dollars, you should be at least considering? Uh, lightening up on dollar longs and uh, where a potential top might come in? Sure. So I, I, I think the uh, immediately the, the 99 level is going to be a little bit hard. I think this this area where it's kind of been some support and resistance and around here is going to be a little bit of, of a problem. And as you can see, like th this this red zone that I have drawn out is something I've been watching closely. Um, I, I knew that was going to be difficult to take out it's just a, a really strong supply level and it has been difficult to take out um but if you, i'm just going to back up out all the way to the monthly i know 
probably you guys don't do a lot of no, stuff that I, far I, out. But. I love telescopes. Are you kidding me? Not enough people right, yeah. use a telescope. Everyone's using a microscope. So, okay. So you can see, uh, go ahead. You see that, that downtrend line there is, um, has, has been hit a few, over a few months, and that it's not too far away from us right now, you know. Still, still going to be right around 100. Okay. So I, I think the smart thing to do is going to be see how that how that level reacts, and then if it takes it out, then I think I think re retesting, you know, at least 102 is going to be in the cards, and you know, I, I know some some dollar bulls that think think we actually hit new highs or test the 120 area. Uh, oh yeah, and those are yeah the the real true deflationists that are you know looking for under a thousand gold and so forth one twenty yeah absolutely uh, um, do you uh, I'm looking at your screen and your setup uh, any view on uh, whether or not what's happened in the equity markets here Chase is uh, potentially a buying opportunity and just corrective or uh, is your work telling you that we may have entered a new bear market. Uh, if you do right. trade the stuff, okay. I do, and uh, so I think we are in we are in in a bear market. However, so I, I was I was bearish for for weeks, and I did luckily turn bullish um, last week as we came into what I what I saw as a nice little demand level, the two hundred the two hundred week. Yeah. And you have this, you know, the the trend line that goes back to to oh nine, all, all kind of playing in, in into the same space there. So. I got I got bullish on a on a shorter term basis, and what I kind of see happening is us rallying back into this under underside twenty six support area that was really painful there for a while, and then probably coming back down. Okay. It, it does look like the economy's slowing enough to to kind of kill kill the bull market, but it's going to be I, I do expect it to be choppy with a lot of volatility and you know some rip your face off rallies. You know, in the meantime. Right. So I, I went to your letter and uh, I read a little bit about it, uh, what you have to say. And tell me if I, uh, you know, got the right drift of what you're talking about. You seem to be, uh, even though uh, yields have come off the 10 year from, you know, three and a quarter to where we are, 268. I actually thought we'd hold 270, 275, that you're a, a long term bear on the bonds and uh, that you're looking for uh, shorting opportunities in the bonds and higher yields. Was was I reading your letter correctly? Is that the right interpretation? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. I've been, for, again, about the same as the dollar. I've been bearish bonds for a couple of years, and I flipped to bullish bonds outside of the 30-year. Um, I'm long everything but, but the 30-year at the moment, uh, but, but still – Longer term bearish. I do think the secular trend has has shifted possibly, um, but but for now, I, I the two two five ten all uh, clearly you know like that's that's a terrible chart. It, these are these are all yield charts by the way. I always always right. like yields or whatever. I, reason, yeah. But okay, and you can see, I mean, that's just that's obviously terrible. I I, I got short or long long bonds whenever we hit here, and uh -huh. in this level, I added. On on five, you can see those horizontal levels, and I, that's where I here on this level is where I got um, long long the, the five, same as the ten okay. here. I do think the ten, whenever whenever the ten gets down to to this horizontal area, could could get a nice little bounce. But uh, ultimately, 30, are ultimately are you looking for uh, that trend line uh, you had on a couple of prior charts that you showed up on yields? Uh, no, I think it was one after that. Okay, yeah. yeah. So the five, we, do you think yeah, we like, could I break think. that? You think we could break that trend line? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're pretty early in this in this slowdown. So far, you know, it's been it's been a lot of sentiment and soft data and the leading indicators rolling over you know ifm still still doing great so i, I think whenever and, and employment still looks great so whenever some of those things start to roll over which I, I, I assume they will i don't know how bad maybe not as bad as a lot of people are fearing but whenever those roll over there's a good chance all these bonds continue to rally uh the the, the main trading vehicle i kind of wanted to put on lately was was a steepener between the two and the 30 
and it's paid so far. Uh, as you can see, the 30 has been pretty resilient. Yeah. And it's coming into a, a nice little demand zone now. But uh, I just I just think what's tough with bonds right now is you have all these macro forces pushing yields down, you know, all over the globe, especially. But at the same time, the issuance is so high because the deficits are, the deficits are blowing out. And, and that's becoming sort of reflective. The higher the deficit goes, the more you have to issue, and then the higher def- the deficit goes. Like, so it, it's sort of a battle between supply and demand, and then the normal reaction function of markets to go buy bonds whenever things get bad. Okay, so uh, uh, you know, uh, look, talking about supply demand, a uh, uh, very vicious sell-off in the energy complex, uh, hand in hand, like a Siamese twin with. Uh, equities, uh, I'd like to see your lines in oil, and if you think we might be approaching uh, some type of low and for at least a reaction. So you have it breaking down, it looks like about 57 or so. Uh, what's your take here? Uh, we go into the 2016 lows, or you think we'll put in a higher low? So I, I don't think, I don't think we're going to go quite that low, um, okay. but I've already been wrong here. So I. Whenever we had the vicious breakdown, we were down about 30% or so. I actually bought a level, which isn't on the chart anymore, um, and got stopped out pretty quickly. And that was actually when I flipped on bonds. Like, I was a vicious bond bear. But whenever whenever oil just went right through a great area and didn't stop, I was like, okay, like, something's changed. Uh, you know, oil supply and demand explained it to a point, but not, not enough. So I knew global growth had to be really coming off. In a, in a way that only oil and a couple other things were kind of showing us. So that, that was actually when I flipped to being long bonds, which was painful for me because I've been so such a bear for a long time. Uh, I, I actually really like oil on a fundamental basis a lot. I think everyone gets really caught up in U.S. inventories and ignores global inventories. Um, Saudi Arabia, it, look, it looks like Saudi Arabia stuffed the U.S. with a bunch of exports that really – you know, beefed up our inventories, inventory numbers, and some of that's going to be coming off in the months ahead. So, and I, I think shale, shale oil is borderline fraud that's going to eventually have a lot of pain. So, okay. there, I think all the fundamentals are, are, are really good longer term. It's just a, a matter of waiting for something that looks like an actual bottom technically to, before you before you mess with it. And maybe that happens at about 40 or, or sooner. I don't know, but. Okay, you mentioned waiting, and you know my belief is waiting is the hardest part. How do you maintain your discipline yeah, of being, being patient, um, waiting for you may have an idea or a bias? Uh, uh, how how do you remain patient? And uh, you know it's hard to be at your trading station and not trade. Uh, what what tips do you have for newer traders as you were once for? Uh, developing patients besides taking losses that'll make someone patient but uh is there any tip that you could give people uh for example how many trades would you say you make in a one month period i don't i don't trade much at all i i, I probably put on and i and so when it comes to futures and forex which is almost all i trade you know i'm i'm putting on probably probably 15 trades a month max it's somewhere okay. between 10 and 15 usually okay some, some of those will be two or two or three days and some will be you know some might run for a month or two but uh it, it, my, my tip though is just man you you always have to start with a chart so if it if it's not a technical level that makes sense to you you just you can't just go in and throw in an order so put your limit orders in on the chart where it makes sense and, and just don't move them and how about risk so management every, how about risk management chase so i am i am a big believer in stops um technical levels you know using daily daily ranges to kind of help help yourself position those stops uh and, and then honoring them and and another thing i think a lot of people don't do enough of is layering in and out of trades uh you know yeah it, it doesn't hurt anything to throw throw one lot on and, and to test the waters before you kind of layer in on the way up or on the way down and people people tend to press press trades whenever they're doing poorly it's, you know you should be pressing trades whenever they're going going in your direction in my opinion 
So okay, that, adding that, in the trade pearl. good for you. Yeah, because you know, it's a, uh, I say you know you don't expect perfection at the crap table. So, do you put a one lot on just to make yourself pay attention, or you know your initial position um, uh, scaling into a position? Do you go like half and half, or thirds, or what is comfortable for you when you're layering in and layering out? So I, I really like thirds, um, but at the same time, so I'm, I'm, I'm a you know. I have a macro framework that's sort of an overlay for technical trading. So if I have something I have extremely high conviction in uh, on a macro basis, then then what I may do is have a core position that I hold even for months. So like being being long dollars, perfect example for that is you know have a, having a core position and then trading around it. So say say that core position is is a 20% position, and then that other 80%. I'm just, you know, trading the charts, uh, layering in, and maybe until you're all the way 80, you know, that other 80% is in the market, and then being able to scale that all the way back down to that core position whenever the charts aren't looking so good, but my macro framework hasn't changed. Okay. So uh, your business model now, Chase, uh, I see you have a newsletter. Perhaps you want to show what you opened up the interview with, that page that you had for your website or blog and uh, what you do, what you offer to the public and uh, how best way for them to get a hold of you after they have either heard us live or the video that'll be released in a few hours. Oh, you're a CFT guy. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so this, just a quick look at the, um, so I have, I have a couple research products that um, for clients. I have the Cascade, which is sort of a, a little bit more of an entry level type of a, a product um, and I, you know I, I do have hedge funds and um, some institutional clients for this letter and I also have a more extensive one that's definitely for, for more institutional um, type type investors uh, and the web, the website's just pineconemacro.com and the easiest way to get a hold of me or talk to me is, is via Twitter and it's just okay. at pineconemacro okay all right, well, uh, really a pleasure meeting you. Like it or not, you're now my trading warrior brother, Chase. And uh, I really uh, hope that you have a very successful 2019 and uh, that your words, uh, you know, really help and edify your subscribers. And uh, I really appreciate you coming in during a shortened week and uh, sharing your views on the markets with us today. So good hunting, buddy. And uh, Thanks again for being with us and presenting uh, your style and a few views on face and appreciate your time today, buddy. All right, much appreciated, Dale. Pleasure to meet you and happy new year. All right, everyone, that's Chase Taylor. And you could find him on Twitter where he says it's the best place to get a hold of him at Pinecone Macro. And maybe what's happening here, Chase, is that the markets are going through to the fire for a rebirth in 2019. All right, let's see. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, that's it, everyone. See you tomorrow. Good hunting. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Looking forward to a great 2019. Uh, remember, like Chase says, you know, be patient and wait for the setups. And you could count on us to let you know when we see things. So uh, everyone enjoy the rest of your trading day. Maybe see you in members chat and tomorrow morning. So good hunting for the rest of the day and see everyone tomorrow. Adios. Thanks again, Chase.